Well, hello and welcome in. Today, we are going to be looking at how you can create transparency using DaVinci Resolve. If you are a streamer, don't click away. This is actually really useful for you as well. So if you're wanting to look at how to have animated GIFs on your live stream, this is a really good way in which you can create your very own. You'll be pleased to hear that this one is actually super, super simple. So let's get to it. So we're straight into DaVinci Resolve. If you're not familiar with this software, I have already done a full beginner's tutorial, so I will leave a link for that down in the description. So be sure to go check that out and then you can come back. But the first thing you're gonna to need to do is find an image that has either a green screen background or some kind of solid color that we can then make transparent. So it can be a black background, it could be a blue background, but green screen, as you know, is a famous for being easy for us to be able to strip that out. So in the example today, we're going to be using a GIF that has a green screen background. And I'm gonna show you how we can remove that to make it completely transparent so we can use it anywhere and on any of our future projects. If you're wondering where to find green screen images, all I would do is to literally search YouTube or Google and look for green screen followed by the type of movie or image file that you're looking for. You can then use a software free tool such as 4K Video Downloader, which is the one that I use. I'll leave a link for it in the description and that will allow you to then take that video and use it in your clips. Now on my Twitch live stream for a while, I've had this animation that didn't have a green screen background. So I just had it kind of just square on my screen. I just thought it would look so much better if I could find a green screen version of it. And I have. So this is the one that we're gonna be working with today. So I'm just gonna pull my clip down onto the timeline and you can see there it is nice, bright and green as we would expect to see. I'll give that a quick play through so you can see what we're working with. <laughs> Terribly annoying, isn't it? <laughs> But what we want to look at doing is we want to remove all of this green background. And it's actually a lot easier than you think it would be. Now the first thing that we need to do is to convert this clip. We're gonna come and right click on there and we're gonna choose the option that's right up at the top that says new compound clip. We don't have to worry about renaming it, just choose create. And now just making sure that we have selected the correct clip, we can see we have because there is a red line around the outside. We're gonna head over to the color tab down at the bottom, which is this one here. So we need to make sure that DaVinci knows that what we're trying to achieve is transparency. So to do that, right click on the background up here, just where this kind of little node is, just right click anywhere there. And we need to choose this option here, which says add alpha output. So alpha is basically transparency in video. You can then see we get this little blue dot. What we need to do is left click on this blue dot on the left and link it up to this one on the right. And you can see that has made like a little dotted line here. What we also then need to do is click on this little green dot here and link this one over to the blue dot there. Don't worry too much about why we're doing this. Just know that you need to do this for the transparency to work in a moment. So at the moment, nothing has changed. So how do we make that background disappear? We need to come down to this area here and you have a few options. You can actually do this a few ways, but I've found that the 3D one seems to work pretty well with green screen images. So we're gonna choose 3D. The next thing you can see is this little area here that says selection range. So you do have some options here where this is choosing a selection. You can then subtract from that selection and go ahead and add to it once you've made an initial selection. For now, we're just gonna leave this as it is here. And you'll see when we hover over, we get like a little picker thing with a plus on there. We just need to either click once or what I would suggest you do is if there is a variation of green, for example, maybe if there's some shading, is to actually drag a line across a big area of the different variations there. What that's done immediately is it's got rid of everything except that green, which is the complete opposite of what we want. So to fix that, come back down here where we chose our selection range and choose the invert option and that will flip it round. And that's great. That's pretty much done, except you can just see on the edges of the hair, we have a little bit of green showing and that's really common. We do have this option here that says despill. If we click that, that usually does a really good job of getting rid of any green tint that may come from a particularly in a green or blue screen scenario. So you can see that's made the color a lot more natural there and gotten rid of all of that green in one click. So if that doesn't quite give you the look that you were expecting, if you use that despill and you've still got that kind of green edge happening, what you can do is let's just turn that off 
and you can have a play with some of these options down here just to tweak it to try and get it as clean looking as possible. In this case, we might want to alter the in and out ratio. So to do that, I can just hold my left mouse button over the number zero there for the in and out ratio and I can move my mouse left and right and you can see going right actually increases the amount of green but if I bring it down the other way I can pretty much take that into the negative and cut that right in you can actually go too far with this I can see that it's starting to cut too far into the hair there so it is just a matter of finding a nice kind of balance in between wherever you're happy there's a second page on here as well that's worth taking a quick look at because some of the items in here, such as black clipping and white clipping, you may want to play with those, especially if you aren't using a green screen image, but you're using something against, say, a black background or a white background. Them ones are really useful for those scenarios. So in this case, I'm pretty happy with how that looks. If you do want to test it, you can come back to the edit tab. We can pull this video up. We can go to our generators, drag in a solid color, change the color there. Let's say that we want it to be red. And you can see now that that is applied against the red background there. If you do test it, just make sure you go ahead and either delete that background or disable it using the D key before you actually go and export. So the next thing we need to do is go to the deliver page so that we can export this. Now it's really important that you get these export settings exactly right. So you need to make sure that the top is set to custom. We'll give it a name and go ahead and choose where you want that to be saved. And now come down a little bit further and here we need to change this from single clip to individual clips. Even if you have multiple items on the timeline, make sure you choose individual clips. It needs to have this selected Otherwise, we're not going to be able to choose the option to export as an alpha. Make sure that the format is set to QuickTime, that your codec is set to GoPro Cineform, and that the type is set to RGB 16 bits. And you'll see what that's done is just below, it's given us the option to export alpha. So make sure that that is ticked. If you want to change the resolution, you can go ahead and do that too. And that's pretty much all that you need to do. So we can now go and add that to the render queue. I'm gonna go ahead and render that out. It shouldn't take too long at all. And then there's one final step for me because I am planning to use this on my live stream is I actually want to convert this from a movie file into a WebM file. So I have a script here that allows me to quickly convert that by giving it a double click. And we can see that I now have my WebM file. This is the file that I would actually use when I pop this image into my OBS. So now that's converted, I can go ahead and just play that and just to check it all sounds okay. <laughs> and that is it. A really, really quick and simple one today. And that is that. I'm really hoping that that was useful and maybe even a little bit easier than you first thought it would be. Fingers crossed. So if you'd like to see more and found any of this useful, go ahead, do all of those things that I love. Hit the like, comment, subscribe. You know what to do. And I will see you in the next one. My name is Becky and I'm loving this game. <laughs>